I personally oversee the reliability engineering group, process manufacturing engineering group, tool design, advanced manufacturing, quality systems, and some subgroups related to that. Uh, that being said, the Lean Six Sigma part of what I do here is, is quite strong. Um, we do, we make things, we put stuff together. And when you have those situations, whether it's a uh, kind of manual assembly, in this case it's um, cameras and sensors. Uh, you know, Lean part is a big part of what we do. We're trying to do more with less. Um, we need to put more production in, in our particular uh, area that we have right now. Instead of buying another building, you try to kind of uh, be more efficient than what we do. Uh, we also need people to be able to do better troubleshooting, to, be, to understand what's right and what's wrong. We need people to understand how to do root cause analysis and how to prevent issues from happening. Uh, whether somebody's title is specifically, say, operational excellence, lean, all that kind of stuff, that, that's true. So they, they, we have one or two of those folks. But all the engineers working in my team need to have this training. It's a, it's a, it's a tool used in their day-to-day -day operations. Now. Right now, I'm kind of preaching that. I'm doing that my, by myself as well. I'm, I'm, I train people here. But uh, when I was an engineer in you know, some of my prior life, uh, I work right now in a high tech, right, doing um, infrared sensors. Before that, I worked in space applications, doing lean stuff for an um, aerospace company in Los, in Los Angeles, uh, SpaceX. Before that, I did medical devices, also with the Lean Six Sigma approach in the quality group. Uh, before that, I did semiconductor process engineering, also with the Six Sigma approach, more Six Sigma than Lean. Uh, so with regards to what I do, uh, I use it, some of the tools on a daily basis, right? Uh, basic, I, I, I look at everything that we do with the Lean approach. When I talk to anybody, right, and tell me, oh, it's going to take me X amount of time to do whatever it is I need to do, right? Uh, and, you know, you start asking questions to see how much really is the value added time versus the time that are just not doing anything. Uh, so it's a tool that we use all the time. Um, educational speaking, right, I have two black belts, one from SQ, one from the university in the East Coast. I'm a master black belt with uh, one of the organizations you guys do the training with, uh, Morse team, and I have a bunch of other uh, certifications in the quality world. Yeah. So, so, so Sebastian, I, I think, you know, based on, you know, your current job, your experience and training, um, you know, you're, you represent somebody who's, who's really applied lean in the you know the various aspects of their roles and their jobs. So, um, what, what's the what's the current situation? Maybe you could describe a little bit. I don't know if these guys know exactly what FWIR does, and, and maybe integrate into that. You know how that you know the lean sort of works and, and overlays into the product, the types of products and things you build. Perfect. Okay, so. Uh, FLIR or Teleline FLIR now, it's a big organization. We, we do all kind of stuff, but I particularly work on the area of infrared sensors. Uh, we make two types of infrared sensors. One, uh, um, it's what we can call a high volume, relatively low cost. And one is relatively uh, low volume and very high cost. Those units are typically used in uh, defense groups, right? So you can have, a, you're trying to protect an airplane to, from being shot down by a missile. So you put some of our sensors to, to detect that missile is being shot at you. Um, you can also use it for search and rescue, and it's very popular in that sense. So you can mount our systems in a helicopter and then go into the forest and find somebody that is lost. It's used for search and rescue or for uh, monitoring, surveillance. Uh, if you're in a boat, right, you can have our, our cameras on top of the boat, and you can see if it's another boat coming or if you're about to crash against the coast, right? Uh, if it's we can see through fog, we can see through rain, we can see through through uh, very strong light, um, like you know the reflection from the sun. In, in, in the more expensive applications, the other applications that we have are becoming very popular these days, uh, cell phone applications, right? Uh, in particular, in the in the Far East, cell phones are having infrared cameras now, uh, mostly ours, um, very high volume, relatively low cost. In other situations, you can think about the autonomous vehicles, right? Uh, they are also going to have our sensors. We're working very strong on that. We're a big, big, big proponent of using our sensors as part of a, the, the awareness of the vehicle that there is somebody in front of the, the path they're going to go to. Uh, so we are expanding in many areas that in the past maybe they, they, they didn't exist. Yeah. But infrared sensor manufacturing, it, it's a very unique 
situation is very highly skilled, very tight tolerances, and in some cases high volume, some cases not so much, right? But these are things that they need to be put together. There are people working in the production line. They're grabbing components. Oh, sorry, that's my light. Uh, they're grabbing components that we need to supply. They need to have a particular quality. There is a particular way to put things together that is more efficient. There is a particular failure mode or particular defects that we detect in our production line. We have issues that are coming uh, from the field that we need to understand why they're happening and how to avoid those. And many of those are related to how we put things together, going back to being efficient and, and being good, right? Uh, it doesn't help anybody to just shove everything there together if you don't comply with the quality level that we need. Hey, so, yeah. I think you know when we, um, so we, we, I forget exactly sort of how we first connected, but you know, um, with, when you when you're implementing this stuff in the production line or sort of working with stuff, we we've got some examples maybe. So last year we did an MBA project with you guys, and that was sort of the, um, I guess it was a burn-in or testing sort of operation where where students were actually, it was kind of neat because we had students that were, in my sense, sort of combining sort of a Lean Six Sigma problem analysis, A3 approach, and actually sort of bringing in like data analytics and looking at sort of past failure modes and techniques. Can you speak to a little bit about maybe sort of the, the types of things that, um, you know, maybe, you know, future MBA teams could do, or I know, I know that was sort of a topic on our list to have a little bit more of a chat. Yeah. About. No, that's fine. We can talk about it. So this, this, we're a technical organization, right? So it's somehow a, a bit interesting that we got a bunch of MBA students to, to do some technical work. Uh, truth be told, it worked out very well, actually. Uh, you should guys realize that uh, everything you're looking is a process. Whether you're putting things together or you're moving numbers around, they're all processes. Mm -hmm. And as such, you can understand how they put together and what can go wrong and what should be right. In our case, uh, this particular line was uh, high volume, very high volume, thousands. We pushed thousands of units in there. And uh, they're using automotive products right now for visual, for night vision systems. No autonomous driving, but night vision. Uh, so it needs to be a very high quality level. The automotive world, like medical devices or health industry, they're very, very high, the, the standards are really high. So we do a lot of measurements to demonstrate that these uh, sensors are working uh, as intended. In this particular case, the testing is done in a, in a frame or, or a basket or a particular test unit that um, has a lot of use. And when you put things in and out on a constant basis, eventually you're gonna have material fatigue, eventually you're gonna have electronics that are not working very well, and when you're having hundreds of those things in there, it's very difficult to track those in and understand which one is one uh, failing, what is a particular failure rate, what is a particular failure mode, and once you understand that, how you're gonna avoid it. Uh, so this group, the, the group that did the internship, helped us uh, set up the system for, for understanding the failure mode, uh, because it was one person doing the work and that person didn't have everything available to them. So by providing the right resources, you know, they were able to build the system to understand what was happening, to, to show the numbers on how much we're failing, how many units are happening, how many times we need to rework, which basically means send the, the same sensor again for testing, and uh, eventually come up with a solution. Now, the solution was on us, and basically means a pre-design of a few components, and, and buying those and then deploying them. But that was based partially on what the, the, the group came up with on what particular was failing. You, you know, it was, it was nice to see the fact that, like you said, so so we had we had some, uh, I think an engineer or two on that team that was, you know, their, your, their undergraduate was engineering. But the nice thing too is, you know, being able to look at that data and it wasn't looking at, you know, waveform analysis or, you know, maybe some of that more engineering type stuff, but just, you know, some yes or no data uh, did it fail or didn't it fail? And, and yes, no on, on what the conditions were and whatnot. And they were able to, you know, kind of, you know, take a, a, a good next step at, at figuring out how to improve the, the capacity and throughput on that, you know, on those baskets, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. And as I say, we're talking about hundreds of baskets. This is no, it's not that you're making rocket science, right? You're understanding something is failing. What is it failing for? Call it what you want. 
red, blue, yellow, or you can have a more discrete uh, scale. But the important thing is that you need to understand how to sort the data and, and what's a primary failure mode, right? And that was very helpful. And, and, and by trying to drill down a little into the root cause, you're able to find some successful countermeasures. Yes. So, so Sebastian, I want to encourage the students to ask questions here in class so that uh, you know they can, you know, it's not just you and me talking. I know we could talk all day okay. about different uh, you know aspects of lean, but um, I want to encourage them to go ahead and do that. Um, now we did like out of that project, you actually hired you know, one student, and I know a lot of industries and, you know, yours included are, are challenged by um, hiring and retaining, you know, good people. So, um, so you got, you got one MBA out of that. Uh, That's right. So it worked out for us both ways. Yes. Yes. Uh, so Rhys is working here in the finance department, you know, that's kind of appropriate. That's what he was looking for and he's doing very well. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be seeing some more lean coming from finance. I know um, you probably saw some of the announcements about the lean accounting workshop that I've got coming up in June. So hopefully we get some folks from FLIR, from the finance areas, the operations to sit side by side in that class and maybe sort of, you know, you know build those sort of better connections. So. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> say that. Yeah, they're all, they're all good ideas. It's a question of, you know, uh, do we but have... I Go ahead and do some of those things. Yeah. Right? No, we'll put it out there. I, I talk to Rhys often, so I'll be sure he's aware of that. He can start with, uh, in that direction. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, any questions? So, MBA, you guys got to help me out here. So, so while, while the, the team is thinking about questions, just keep in mind that, uh, you know, I've been doing this for many years, right? 20 years, and it, it's been quite a rich career. So don't, don't feel that you have to be in a box and just ask, uh, you know, just directly a question about lean, right? Uh, you know, what, what are you looking for in here? What, what, would you, what, what do you think is gonna make your life easier when you go into this uh, area, whether you're gonna be a lean practitioner full time or it's gonna be just part of your repertoire of tools? Um, well, yeah. ask questions about that. Yeah, Tyler. Uh, can, you, can you hear me if I'm talking? Is this volume? Uh, I think Eric is going to have to repeat the question. So I ask that and then uh, we'll see where we go. Um, so my question is, given the amount of experience Sebastian has with Lean, how do you, how do you introduce it when it's new to someone? Um, like that first conversation where you're trying to get somebody on board with a Lean approach, how do you, how do you introduce the concept? Yeah, so Sebastian, so the question is like, you know, so you're, you're trying to get somebody on board and buy into lean. How do you how do you introduce that concept? Okay, so I, I'm going to give you a, a, a two way answer. The one is the standard answer that we tell people what lean is about, and the other one is the answer that that I use to get that buying from everybody. So we tell people, right? Because it's, it's true; it's not a lie, right? That Folks that learn the lean approach, the, the, the lean idea, the philosophy, uh, they're more effective how they do work, right? And, and, you know, they will streamline your process and they will reduce waste. Those are all true statements. The problem that we have is that the recipient of that statement mm, very likely is not gonna fully understand what that is. So when I try, peop when I try to sell Sell. When I try to sell, tell people, look, you know, you should send your team to training. I don't necessarily tell them that, but I tell them what every manager wants to hear from anybody. You know what? We can skill your person in better decision making, in better use of their time, and better use of other people's time. Don't you want that? Yeah. Or, or you want to pay for your for your team member to just waste their time doing whatever they need to do 50 times because they cannot do it right the first time. So I'm telling them the same thing, but in a language and in a situation that they, they will understand what they are trying to do. Uh, it's been a very common failure on, on some of my colleagues that they try to use just a technical definition of what Lean is, uh, the philosophy of Lean, and thinking that the other folks are gonna understand, right? Uh, and you know, you need to study what Lean is. The expectation that somebody else is gonna get it because you just make a sentence or two, uh, it's maybe a bit too far-fetched. So for me, even though I know that 
you know, the definition that we're talking about, lean, the philosophy, all that kind of stuff is true. I don't particularly use that to, to let people know that the, the benefit of why it's important for them to go and get trained and learn the philosophy. So. Yeah, you, you know, I, I like that, Sebastian. So, so maybe the the way into these guys, you're saying, like you're saying, is you know, just just talk to things that the managers care about, and you know, one of them is you know having the capability, building capability, your student in your students and your in your students in my case, or in in your employees in your case of making better decisions, right? Yep. From where it comes down. Yeah, it's all about that, you know. We all want to be effective. Yeah, so, cool. Other, other questions? Yeah. Um, so or? did you run into any problems doing possibly remote work during COVID and implementing lean with those types of projects? Yeah, so, so Sebastian, the, the question from Flora is about um, doing remote work, you know, when you're trying to do lean. Um, I know our, our MBA team last year, like we, we like to have folks come down and visit you, but you know, visits were sort of out of the off the table, right? Last yeah. year. So it is very difficult, you know. It's just uh, we did we did the the internship online, uh, and it took ten times longer than it should have taken, right? That's basically what it goes to. Everything becomes way less effective for that. Can you use lean? When you're working via Zoom or remotely, absolutely. Yeah, as I say, it's a process, right? So you, you can use the concepts, it's just the, the go live or the actual implementation of changes that you're trying to make. Those two, everything took longer. Everything was way more than that. You cannot just stand up and go talk to somebody, right? You cannot find them. And, and then you need to make a meeting and they have conflicting meetings. And I, whatever, it was just, everything just took longer. So right now that we're kind of, out of a COVID wave, uh, I can just go and talk to people, it makes everything go faster, including the lean deployments and the lean approach, right? Uh, so we're continue to modify our production line. Now, our side or, or what I do, we have to keep coming to the office, right? This, this is, there was no break for us. But people that we need to work with, they were not here. A lot of uh, systems engineers or design engineers, they were not here. So everything took longer. Yeah. That was very painful. Yeah, you, you know, it, it occurs to me as you describe that, you know, one of the things that we're really big on in Lean is this idea of go to Gimba, right? Mm -hmm. and it's a real, I, I hadn't sort of thought of it from this standpoint, but also from the, the standpoint of a manager being able to stand up, walk down to the production floor, talk to the people directly who are doing the work. Um, that's a pretty lean system in comparison to what you just described has yeah. to happen you know, virtually and with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Very difficult, yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. Other, other questions from folks? Yeah, Liani. I noticed that when I try to talk to people and understand like what the problems are, I don't really get much of a response. And I think ego and people not wanting to admit that things are going wrong and just trying to shove it under the rug or themselves. So how do you see when talking to them doesn't really do much? Yeah, good questions. This is the, like, do you get people to disclose problems? Or are they hiding problems? What, what's your, yeah. what's your so, that? Yeah, so, so you guys are going to learn on the Lean thing that you always need to talk to people. And that is totally true. It is and absolutely true, it's, a, it's an undeniable reality that some people do not have the best intentions when they talk to you or with somebody else. So yes, they could be hiding some of the information because it's not good for them to look and say, oh, we didn't do right. Uh, there are other people that they don't have a malicious intention, but they do feel defensive. Like, look, I've been doing this for a while. You can't just come and tell me I've been doing this wrong. Uh, and it happens, right? Uh, and by the way, they could be doing it wrong, even though they've been doing this for a while. It's just, uh, also an undeniable truth. Uh, so there is a key element in the, in the lean world that you, you all need to understand, right? You have to be respectful. You have to be respectful of people. If they're doing something incorrect, it's not truly their fault. The system allowed that to happen. Whatever was put in place, it, it was saying, it's okay to do this thing. And now we're trying to remediate that. 
So a key element is for everybody to understand that you are not there to blame or, or, or to point fingers or whatever you want to call it. it, it it's, it's humongously important that folks understand that. The moment that somebody gets penalized for whatever they did, you're going to lose all cooperation for everything. We get that a lot. People make mistakes. We, it's, it's expected. It's a human nature. Yeah, they, they thought that you, everything's going to be perfect. It's, it's, it's a fantasy. For as long as you don't blame people and you have a professional conversation and, and they all realize that you're you know, trying to go in the same direction, uh, it'll be okay. The moment that you, uh, somebody's disrespectful, the moment that somebody starts pointing fingers, all that trust goes away and it's very difficult to get that back. So trust, be professional, be respectful and understand that some people, even though you, you're going to be the best professional in the world, they're still going to go against what you're saying because they didn't come up with the idea or because they, they've been proposing that for 10 years and nobody's listening to them. So now they're pissed off, so they're not going to collaborate. And that's reality for, with people. So you need to manage people. You need to manage expectations. You need to understand I, at some point you're going to stop talking to somebody and say, okay, man, this is not working out for us. Thank you very much. Let me go in another direction, but you need to talk to the manager. Um, again, not blaming anybody. For whatever reason, that person is upset. Right? And it's not my fault that you know five years ago nobody nobody listened to what that person has to say. But you need you need to fix it now. So be respectful, and eventually people will come along. Yeah, like you I, will encounter that for sure. Yeah, you know I, I like that. And you know, you don't have the you don't have control over you know what happened five years ago or, or what sort of put that person in that circumstance. But as a manager, you know certainly you can. You know, encourage you know more disclosure. I, I guess I, you know, there's, uh, you know, one of the one thing I sort of think about, you know, my my less sane moments is that you know the manager, you know, not only do they want to hear about your problems, but you know they're doing the little happy dance, right? Say, good, you found a problem. That's great. Yeah, that's true. And, and, yeah. and doing some sort of reward, right? And I yeah. think best lean companies, you know, that's actually the way they. They view problems and yeah. raising those. those yeah, it's totally true. I complain a lot about the problems that we have, but frankly, that's partially what we enjoy. We're all dorks and nerds here, right? We're all technical people, and when something bad happens, we know that, hey, we get to use our technical mind now. Right. Yeah, so it's true. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it just happens. It's human nature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. All right, so Sebastian, I, I think that wraps us up for the, the half hour we had allotted for this. I really appreciate your coming here and, and talking to the MBAs, and we're gonna we're gonna do some more talking about how we can, you know, potentially, uh, you know, sort of build on our relationship and the good results of last year, and line up some some MBA projects and some other internships and student projects sort of going forward. I know you're always on the lookout for good engineers um, down in. Yeah. Barbara, because that's uh, it's kind of the name of the game these days. So uh, we're trying to get exactly. stuff. But but um, before I let you go, so new MBAs, new to their lean journeys, or some of them are a little ways on their lean journey. This is not necessarily always the first class for some of these guys in lean. But do you have some parting words of advice or or wisdom that you can share with them? Yeah. So all the stuff that you guys are going to learn from the lean approach is immense for immensely useful. It's going to take you far if you use those things. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be super technical. Everything is a process. Use the lean methodology or the lean philosophy of understanding that, you know, there is ways here, ways there. Don't get mad. Make it right. It will take you far. It's a very powerful tool and it's immensely useful on any application that you're going to go. And remember, I did that in semiconductors, medical devices, aerospace, uh, high tech, they all work. So please keep learning that and don't, don't stop after this class. Just keep using it. All right. Sebastian, thanks a lot. I'm going to, um, let's see, if I swing the, the camera around this way, this is sort of, you know, what the class looks like. I'll give you a little wave. Goodbye. Thank you for uh, being here and talking with us. And um, Sebastian, we'll, we'll, we'll talk some more. We'll be in class. Thank okay. you, everybody. Good luck with everything. All right. Take care. See you bye. later. All right. Bye-bye.